go. All right. Welcome to Ben. Thank you very much. Oh, yeah. Uh, thank you. Uh, hi, everyone. Nice that you are here. Uh, first disclaimer, I'm not used this anymore to work with Max, so maybe I messed something up because it's confusing how Max is working. But uh, let's start. I will basically run through the first couple of slides because I only have 25 minutes, so I have to make it uh, a bit quick. So um, let's talk about uh, automated testing of uh, documentation. Actually, first question, how is actually has already uh, in their workflow for documentation like a CI setup included or is using CI CD for testing and deploying not only the product but also the documentation and runs something like simple or not so simple quality insurance text tests of your documentation in CI? No one. Oh, okay, cool. <laughs> I mean, it, it, it's not hard. It's, uh, it's like running CI for your uh, normal things. And um, let's just jump straight into it. So that's the first part, the boring part. It's about me. I'm a DocOps engineer and work for Pronovix. I have an uh, old school sysadmin DevOps slash SIE background. I'm also involved in some open source thingies or communities like Plone. Maybe some people here in the room know it. <laughs> it's uh, CMS or Enterprise CMS based on Python. And also involved in two other communities like Test the Dogs and uh, Write the Dogs. And uh, I really like to complain. And this talk is also um, quite op Opinionated and basically based on experience from uh, various open source communities. So that may or may not fit the use case if you are working on a company. So it's first to already check. So we all know that, so we learned it in the meantime. Writing is not that hard. Sometimes we always just write a couple of lines of documentation, but no, it's not because you want to, to make sure that you reach the audience, that the audience is understanding your docs and, and stuff like that. The same with this uh, continuous integration, basic stuff, at least if you're experienced with continuous integration or a developer, is easy, but if you're starting to uh, build up your CI system and you're getting more and more tests into it, it can get quite complicated. And um, also, like always, there is no perfect solution or no golden solution. Like always, there are lots of different ways to uh, reach your goal. It always depends on your effort, time, money, and what you need. And uh, also, automated tests are nice, but they don't can fix all your issues or problems. It's only one part which can help you to make your life a bit easier. Basically, all the things like quality insurance start in your editor and after your editor with people like you, real humans who are trying to read, understand, and test your documentation. And then, yeah, disclaimer again, it's based on uh, open source experience, and uh, some of you may or may not recognize uh, some comments to some uh, repositories. And um, let's jump into it. So, I mean, we have in 2019, but actually I'm praying this since a couple of years. Documentation these days is an important part of your product. Just push your product out and say people try and install it will not help you. You will not sell that because you get annoyed or, you will, or your customers get annoyed and move away. And also it will cost you lots of money because you have to spend lots of money and effort and time in help desk or uh, other annoying things. And also, if you want to have uh, new developers able to jump in quickly, provide them with usable documentation. It's, it's really perfect for onboarding because in the whole onboarding process, they can also can test, basically, the documentation. And like always, I like to say, yeah, if you have no docs, your whole product is basically broken. Um, yes, and also the, the other thing, uh, it's important to, to take, people tend to forget that with writing documentations. Uh, take care about the editors, meaning the people who are basically editing your documentation. So uh, that is really my, uh, my message to all your awesome developers. It's really nice that you're trying documentation, 
but also try to write meaningful documentation and readable, readable documentation. And uh, this, for example, a really quick example. This is a code of conduct from the awesome Write the Docs community, which is awesome, and they are really nice people. And uh, this is uh, the source. It's uh, the restructured text. It looks awesome rendered at HTML, but at the source, it, uh, well, I think there's some room for improvement because personally, it's my personal opinion, reading that and editing that, for me, it's way harder than doing that, which is exactly the same file, but then uh, following a markdown style guide and some couple of tiny wording style guides. It's really the same, but it, it follows the whole F shape, how people tend to, to read source code or basically sites or newspapers, and also it's a uh, certain line length and other stuff, so it makes it for me at least easier to, uh, to work on stuff like that. And then, uh, well, now we're getting to the fun part with uh, basically checks or quality insurance. The most important thing is you need to plan, you need the ideas, you have to know actually what is your goal, what you want to reach with uh, checking documentation. Lots of people say, oh, yeah, yeah, let's do it, cool, we start checking it, but they have no idea what kind of checks do you want to have. So first, you have to define a goal. Is my goal just I want to remove all the typos, or is my goal I want to uh, have a certain uh, level of uh, readability? So this is really important, uh, and also use same values of your checks. Don't start with uh, two strict checks. If you start with two strict checks, all the people who uh, contributing to, to your docs will be really, really unhappy because basically your tests or your CI in this case will scream every 20 seconds against you. And uh, it's nice for later, but if you want to have nice results and people are motivated, start slow and tweak and tune them later. Also, it's important if it's possible, start from the beginning of the projects, also with checks of documentation, because if we have already something like, I don't know, 500 sites of uh, documentation about the user manual, and adding then checks and trying to fix all that, it's possible, but it's not the nicest thing uh, to do. Then uh, also important, be strict, but be friendly. So give people, if the test is failing, mean, meaningful uh, messages, why it's failing, explain why it's failing and send them with links to background information how they can fix it. Same as for error messages. And also important, know your audience. Who is contributing to the documentation? That maybe if you work on a company, easier because you have a writing team. But if you're involved in an open source project, sometimes you really first have to know who is contributing the most because depending on that, you may want to adjust your checks to make them on certain levels more user-friendly or less strict. And uh, how to get, in, there are lots of different ways how to get information. I like to use uh, Grafana hooked up to my GitHub or Bitbucket repositories to give me information about my contributors, pull requests, who's doing pull requests, who's doing merge requests and all the other stuff. Also use analytics like Matamo, Good Analytics, whatever you use to get information about uh, who's visiting your site, how they're coming to the site, how they're looking up content on your site, how they're searching for your site, because they also give you a clue and an idea where it's important to start fixing up your documentation, basically. So maybe it's more important first to run checks only on a certain part of the documentation and later extend them, then running on all of it. And then, really, really important, since we're also talking CI, CD, developers are your friend be friendly to them, work together with them. It doesn't help if you just stamp with your foot on the ground and say, I want to have it like this. So try to adopt the tools that they are using, try to provide them with meaningful templates, and also yeah, make it easy for them. So for Plone, for example, we created Marvin, which is our friendly helping robot, which is really nice because if people starting to write uh, Plone trainings or other parts of the documentation, it will create your uh, boilerplate with the title, the last, the, the right uh, RST syntax, configure checks and stuff like that. And this is nice because first is uh, CLI and our, our developers, they like CLI, but also it gives them a nice starting base to uh, start from and uh, move on. 
Also, if you run checks, first we did run checks on the whole documentation, which we'll also see later. This is nice, but to make the checks oh, fast and quick, just run the checks on files which are changed. You don't have to check 500 pages when only one page is changed. Uh, then, yeah, a friendly reminder, like you should know that, of course, uh, protect your branches. If you don't protect your branches, you may end up with weird commits to weird branches, which will result in weird documentation online. Uh, if you write checks, use the best uh, coding practice against the languages you write them in, and also make sure they are passing tests of the language. Like I already said, keep the checks easy, start small, and uh, make checks depend on each other. So just run the for example, if you run an HTML deploy, make sure that you only want to deploy if all other past tests before that are passing, otherwise you will end up deploying broken HTML. And uh, yeah, like dog said code, you see a smaller uh, example, do not break the build. If you break the build, of course, uh, fix it. I have to move up a bit. And uh, now it's uh, demo time, which will hopefully work. First, a really short uh, disclaimer. The demo setup is also online. I will post the link later. This is only for local usage. Don't try that on uh, your production setup because I do evil, uh, evil stuff like uh, mounting Docker socks and uh, volumes and uh, doing that. It's fine on a laptop, but on production machines, use Kubernetes DC8 or install it up uh, barebone. And basically, we have Two short demos, one which we use in Travis, hopefully the internet will work, and the other one it's running uh, locally. And uh, this is for later, oops. And uh, how to get my... Uh, do, you wanna, do you want a mirror? Uh, oh yeah. Because there's a very nice shortcut. There we go. Uh, uh, where's my mirror? Okay, uh, below this is basically what is uh, running uh, on uh, Travis and then uh, deploy, deploy to Netlify. And uh, if you check at the moment, it will tell you that... No, oh, really lovely, I love it. Well, it will tell you that uh, basically it, it, it's failing and because of that uh, we can't deploy to our website. And basically, it is failing because we have uh, this, this one line, line uh, 25, down there. So, and this basically, it's, it's a really minimal linter which is checking uh, your writing guides. And we have another style guide that we don't want to start lines or sentences with uh, there is. And because of that, it's failing. And if you remove that now. It's also the internet, okay, if we do the others test then. Blah, 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 blah. There we go now. Test three. Come on, slow internet. Then we see it's uh, basically it's a uh, is running and now uh, in the meantime uh, we have locally also set up with the drone and uh, Gitir and here's a basically a repository and uh, we also see that the oh, lovely it's a better no why is it so small so now we can see that the build is uh, is basically failing and this uh, on purpose we are using basically the same checks which we are using uh, on, the, uh, on, on Travis, but then with the stricter settings. And I tend to do that. That means because I personally I run stricter checks for myself locally on CI. I always have the CI locally running. 
And uh, if they are passing, I know for sure that they are also passing on, uh, on the main side. And the reason why I use strict uh, um, checks for myself is to really, really make sure that uh, we slowly basically improve the, the quality of the docs. And we can also now just try that. That is then here. And I mean, this one will still fail because I will not fix it now. Now we see it's, uh, it's running. And the link is, uh, is OK, hopefully, when we have internet. Man, 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 the internet is really fun here. So what checks are you running? This now, it's, uh, if you can see this one for, uh, for Netify, passed, it's green, and it's uh, deployed to the side, hopefully. Yes. Uh, for the demo, I'm running just the basic uh, link checks and then a style check with uh, Valalint, which is checking for, uh, for uh, spell checks, language that I don't use certain words that I make sure I don't start sentences with there is, uh, uh, so, or but, uh, certain line length, paragraph length, and uh, tech terms, and um, that is it basically. But the, the, there's no, um, the, the possibilities are endless. We, we, for example, with, uh, with Chris, the, the veil setup, it, it, you, you can do really funny and insane things. So, and this is the fun part, but also the dangerous part, because you really, really have to think from uh, what I want to test. Because you can go really, really crazy and test lots and lots and lots of stuff. But uh, you really have to ask yourself, at least when if you start from, is that really the goal from the beginning? Maybe sure, over a certain amount of time, I want to test all this stuff. But uh, I want to test, maybe want to start small. And also the important thing is to check... Uh, you can check the levels of testing, like is my test giving me a warning or a suggestion or is falling. So I, for example, start basically to set everyone to suggestion and it's basically the test is running through, but it's telling me from, hey, maybe you want to change that word or your line is uh, 20 charts too long or other stuff. And then later on, step by, st by step or run by run, I adjust them and move them from, uh, from suggestion to error or to warning and with... Uh, then you also can define levels with, uh, with errors. The, the build is failing and it will not deploy. With warning, you can also, or I can configure, and you can too, like, uh, like the spell check. If I get a warning with, uh, with spell check, uh, then fail. But if I get a warning with uh, my line is uh, 20 charts too long, then run through it. And then you get a whole matrix of different tests, and with the different tests, later on you can adjust them and that helps you to uh, improve your quality of your docs slowly. And you don't have to run like me CI locally. You can also use uh, Git hooks or, or other stuff. And uh, yeah, this site is deployed. Lovely, lovely, lovely. And this one is, uh, of course, not having internet. But yeah, it, uh, it's a same check. And if you go now back to uh, the slides. Yeah, that was a bad lead. Or thank you uh, to Provenix because they are awesome people and actually the writing and content team because they keep up with my <laughs> ideas on the... That's not always that easy, I think. And uh, thank you all of... I want to apologize because it was a bit short and a bit... Uh, really, really short. But it's 25 minutes. It's really hard to tell all the stuff in 25 <laughs> minutes. Yeah, five minutes for questions, though. So if there's any gaps... <laughs> uh, you mentioned that uh, it would be good to uh, first start with simple rules and then uh, tune them. 
Yes. But what will happen with the recommendation which was written without uh, those new rules? We, uh, we did, for example, with Plone the same, because they, we had lots of documentation, there were no rules, and though we started to write uh, a whole sheet about uh, where we want to be in, uh, in the future, and then we took that apart and said, okay, this is the end goal, but now we have to rip it apart in smaller steps, and uh, first, through reaching all the, the smaller steps, step by step, we reached the end goal. No, that is why uh, yes and no. Uh, if you run them on all, all the existing documentation, uh, yes, but how we solving it now is uh, we uh, run it only on uh, the files which people are including their commits. So I have maybe all the 500 pages, but since there was only a, a change on uh, one site, only the one site is, uh, is checked, and you only get the result for the one site. Well, the other 499 sites, they are still bad and not improved. But by this, we are improving the documentation over the time. Thank you. Do you think you too would have a way to test um, code samples you could put in documentation or be extended to do that? Yes, it's possible. There's this one guy from Amsterdam also. Did, uh, talk at the last uh, Write the Docs last year. He's doing that. He has, for, uh, for, for things, basically, he wrote a plugin to, uh, to do that. And there are also some experiments with uh, having all your code examples in own repository and test them then, uh, only in this repository, and then include them from this rep code repository or code example repository into uh, your documentation. There are different ways how to do that. All of them are still kind of buggy and not working perfect. And um, we are also still for Plone figuring out which is the best approach for us because it should be easy-ish ma easy maintainable but still also giving you basically results. So um, if you use like uh, for your hosting your documentation something like uh, ASCII doc and Antora, then it's basically easier because uh, they can fetch different repositories and uh, combine them into one nicely rendered HTML output. All right. Thank you very much. Um,